As many of you know, I mostly shoot Nikon gear. However, I started thinking about how various cameras might yield color differently. So I thought I'd do a comparison of some of the leading camera brands and look at the color that each sensor renders. So here's my test on color comparisons. Hi, I'm Terry Vanderheide, and I got this idea in my head to compare the color rendition from one manufacturer to the other. So I put together a test. I was wondering how Nikon, which is I'm biased to because that's what I've shot professionally for a very long time, how would it stack up against the two other leading brands, Sony and Canon? Now I tried to make things as fair as possible. So on my Nikon I, Z9, I used a 105 macro lens. On the Canon, it was a 100 macro. And on the Sony, it was a 90 millimeter macro. For this test, I was just looking at color. So I'm not looking at sharpness or resolution or anything else just comparing color and to see which brand or if a brand comes out on top. Now color is very subjective. A red that I might like may not be as pleasing to someone else. So keep that in mind as you see how this test goes. I'm going to provide these raw files from each of the manufacturers for you to download for free. Just go to my website, imagelight.com, go to free downloads, and you should be able to download them there and compare them to your own files. Now about the capture process. On most cameras, you have the choice of how your color is rendered on the sensor to compensate for the color of light in the scene that you're capturing. There are many choices like auto, direct sunlight, cloudy, shade, incandescent, and the list goes on. While many of you just use auto white balance, I hardly ever do. The reason is, is that the camera doesn't know what your subject is. Now, by that, I mean, for example, I was shooting a person speaking on a stage and the background was a bright blue curtain. The camera saw all that blue and added yellow to the image to compensate for all that blue, thereby making the speaker too yellow. The other problem with auto white balance is that it'll change from image to image. So if you want to do a global fix on the color in a series of images, you'd have to correct each one of them individually where if you shot them all on the same color mode, you could correct them all at once in something like Lightroom Classic. I think it's always best to choose a color scene that fits what you're shooting. If you're shooting in the shade, then set your camera on shade and so on. When in doubt, you can always default to auto white balance, but that's only if you just don't know where to start. For a more controlled test, I used a color meter. The color meter I use is a Sakonic. Uh, it's a... This is a C700 in Amex C7000, and it's about 2200 bucks, so it's not for everyone. I use mine mostly for video work, but it came in handy for this test on still photography. I started with a standard color chart. You can buy these all different sizes, and this one has decently large color swatches on it, so it made it a little bit easier to determine. I set it up outside so I could use available light. And since I was using a color meter, it really didn't matter what colors might be bouncing around in that area. I set up each camera and lens on and made sure to have no filters in place. I took my color readings by turning the meter back towards the lens and stepping out of the way so I wouldn't get a color reading of whatever shirt I was wearing. The reading is a four digit number that equates to the color of light falling on that card. This is a Kelvin light temperature reading. Once I got the reading, I went into the menu and looked for white balance. Then I scrolled to K, which stands for Kelvin temperature. And here's where you can input the color temperature number from the color meter. I took a new color meter reading for each new camera that was set up, just in case the conditions changed while I was mounting the new camera on the tripod. I shot everything at the same aperture and shutter speed. I did some bracketing. And when I selected the images, I chose all the same exposure ratings. So let's get into Lightroom and have a look at the results. All right, so we're in Lightroom here and got three images up. And the first one here, you can see down here is an ARW, that's a Sony file. And then as we go to the next one, this is the CR3, which is a Canon file. And then this one is in the Nikon file, NEF, Nikon electronic file. So let's take a look at these closer up and together. So as we look at this, 
one of the things is kind of cool. Let's go into develop module here. When we go into the develop module, we have the ability to take a look at colors and see exactly how it's being rendered. So let's say, for instance, we wanted to look at this red. If we go over here and look at this panel, you'll see that as we move that around, that number changes, okay? So inside of the red, it's made up of a lot of different parts, right? Red, green, and blue. So it's 53 red, 23 green, uh, 16 of blue. That's for this red. Now, if we go over here, go to the same, the Canon version here, and we look at this, you'll see that, that those numbers are different. So it's a little hard to compare the, the different files in Lightroom. So what I decided to do was let's take these images into Photoshop so we can kind of hold that number and then compare it as we go. So let's check this out. If you're enjoying this kind of content, take a second to click the like button and then subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell icon and YouTube will notify you of my next video. While I read and answer all of the comments in the section below, you may want to contact me directly. So feel free to send me an email to terry at imagelight.com and I'll answer back and then put you on my mailing list to let you know when a new video is released. So let's get back into Lightroom. All right, so these images are now in Photoshop. So let's go into our colors here and we're gonna do a little sampling of colors. So we grab our eyedropper tool and we'll move this up to an 11 by 11 average so that we can get uh, a better idea of what this color looks like. So if we go in here, we go to window, we can pull down and we're gonna to go to info and bring our info palette up so we can see what it is we're looking at. Let's go ahead and uh, take a tag right in here and you'll see that the numbers, they don't change a lot, but they change a little bit as we move around. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up into this corner so we can try to compare apples to apples, so to speak. So let's go ahead and click on that. And in fact, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here and pull this down and go to the color sampler tool. And what this does is leaves a nice little tag where we want it. So let's go ahead and click on that. So that's leaving us a tag at red is 153, green is four, blue is 39. So that's the Photoshop version of what colors of the red, green, and blue spectrum make up this red. Okay, so let's move this out of the way and let's go to the Canon and we'll do the same thing. We'll grab our tool Come over here and we'll put this right in about the same spot and click and we see that the canon version is 172 29 and 50 for that so that's our version for that so let's go ahead and move to the nikon version and already we can see that the nikon version seems to be a little bit bluer but let's find out we'll go put the tag in the same spot click and of course 143 38 56 so yes indeed there's a lot more blue in the, in the Nikon version. So as we look at these side by side, let's go ahead and we're just gonna crop these so we have this cropped, it makes it a little bit easier to work with. All right, now that we have all these separated out, we have the Nikon version here that we can see we're tagged at 143, 38, 56 in terms of red, green, and blue. When we come over to our Sony, we've got 52, 439. So quite a bit less green in this red. And then over here, we've got it set at 172, 29 and 50. So it kind of appears that these are pretty close. So they have 30, Nikon has 38 a green. And in here, the Canon has 29 a green. And both of them have you know, the Nikon has 143 of red and the Canon has 172 of red where the Sony has just 39 of blue and just four of green. So it has a lot less green. And this is kind of subtractive, right? Because if you're taking uh, red and you have less green in it, that's going to make the red more vibrant because you're taking the green away. So as these colors are rendered, it's gonna depend on what you're looking for. So as we look at these, when it comes to just the reds, if we're looking at the reds, what's the most realistic red? Well, again, subjective, but my opinion is 
the Canon looks like it's probably the most realistic red. This seems a little vibrant, a little too oversaturated, and the, and the Nikon looks a little bluish. But let's go to a different color and see if we get any different results. Let's come down here and grab this blue in this corner, and we'll do this to all three files as well. So now we're looking at blue on these swatches as we've set this up. We've cropped it, and then we've just tagged the blue. So if we tag the blue right here on the Nikon version, it appears to be 166371, so quite a bit of blue in this. As we go into the Canon and we look here, this is 3739167, so somewhere in between. And then we come over to the Sony, and we have zero red, absolutely zero red, and then 51 and 136 of blue. So you can see that these are all different and it depends on what you like when it comes down to the color. So it appears to me, to my liking, I would say I like the Nikon blue being the best because it's, uh, while it's blue, it's not, it's not over correcting and adding too much depth to it, where this, the Sony, again, is a little too saturated for my taste. But what's nice about any of these files, and no matter what file you work on, you're gonna find that, uh, yes, different sensors are going to render color differently, but you're going to find that you can easily correct this. And I'll show you real simply how to do that in Lightroom. All right, so we're now back in Lightroom. And a real simple way inside of Lightroom, you go into the develop module, you have this little eyedropper tool. And you can bring that eyedropper tool over any of the colors that you might want to balance. But watch what happens if we go over the magenta and click it. Look, it changes all of the colors in the whole image because it's trying to balance the magenta as the neutral color, and it's obviously it's not. So if we were to take this, grab this eyedropper tool, and hover it and, and click on a medium gray like this tone right here, when we click on it, it balances all the tones in this file against that medium gray. So if we go into this other next one, this is the Canon file, we'll click on the eyedropper tool, grab that and balance that. You can see, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it looks like it added a little bit of yellow to that whole image. We come in here, which is the Nikon, which obviously to me looks a little blue and flat. We click on that and then of course adds a little bit of yellow as well. So when we look at all three of these images together, we have them all up on the screen. As I look at these, and again, we're just looking at color. We're not trying to look at resolution. We're not trying to look at contrast because all of those things are changeable here inside of Lightroom. Uh, and even the colors are changeable. But in this particular case, as we look at it right out of the camera, I think that the Sony is a little too saturated. I think that the Nikon is frankly, a little bit flat and a little blue, but the Canon out of the camera probably looks the best. And I'm telling you, this is hard for me to say, but I think the Canon file has the best color out of the, ca out of the camera. So you tell me what you think in the comments. Go ahead and list what you think. Go ahead and download these from my website, and then you can really compare them one-to-one, one -one, side-by-side on your monitors, and get back to me and let me know what you think is a better color out of the camera. My next video, I'm gonna show you how to calibrate colors inside of Lightroom. It's a really cool feature. It's really cool for landscapes. If you're doing landscapes, you're gonna to wanna to check that out. All right, see you next time.